example here from the Purple Heart Proclamation. And I don't know if anyone want to speak on it before I read that proclamation. Chapter 1976 would like, it's very proud to be able to come to Gladstone tonight and make you a Purple Heart City. We also want to make sure that you understand that we are for all the veterans in Gladstone, not just the Purple Heart, although we like the Purple Heart, <laughs> okay? Uh, here we're, is what we're going to give you. It's a plaque stating that Gladstone is a Purple Heart City. And it, if you want me to read it, I can, but I think you all can do it, can't you? Okay. And this is the... Purple Heart play that we'll, we would hope that you would set it in, in the lobby here as where everybody comes in so they can see the plaque in the play. And Bill? And these are the signs that we're going to put up. There's three of them. The fourth one by the high school. You know, we're just sitting there and there. And one going to Espinal and one going back. There's three of them. Okay. And basically, that's it, gentlemen. Okay, well, I'll read the proclamation then. Uh, whereas the city of Gladstone, the state of Michigan, has always supported its military veteran population, and whereas the Purple Heart is the oldest military decoration in present use and was initially created as a badge of military merit by General George Washington in 1782, and whereas the Public Heart was the first American service award or decoration made available to the common soldier and is specifically awarded to members of the United States Armed Forces who have been wounded or paid the ultimate sacrifice in combat with declared enemy of the United States of America. And whereas the mission of the military order of the Purple Heart is to foster an environment of goodwill among the combat wounded veteran members and their families, promote patriotism, support legislative initiatives, and most importantly, make sure we never forget. And whereas Gladstone has a large highly decorated veteran population, including many Purple Heart recipients. And whereas Gladstone appreciates the sacrifice our Purple Heart recipients made in defending our freedoms and believe it is important that we acknowledge them for their courage and show them the honor and support they have earned. Now, therefore, I, Jay Bostwick, Mayor of the City of Gladstone, Michigan, do hereby proclaim the City of Gladstone a Purple Heart City and encourage the citizens of the city of Gladstone to show their appreciation for the sacrifice that the Purple Heart recipients have made in defending our freedoms, to acknowledge their courage, and to show them honor and support they have earned. That's it, I guess, eh? Yes. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Grant, can we get a picture? Can we get a picture? Or you and the mayor, Asinol. Uh, you and Phil and Brelton, the plaque probably. The, that's it. Just one All right, moving on, uh, public comment. Okay, then moving on to the consent agenda for the Planning Commission for regular meeting of February 7th, the DDA, of February 14th, the DDA, of February 23rd, 
the DDA of March 14th and payment of bills. I move to approve the consent agenda. Support. All right, motion by Commissioner View, support by Commissioner Mantola to approve the consent agenda. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Mayor, I have a. Oh. Um, the commission um, minutes are in draft form and available if anybody wants them, but Steve, I still need your comments for the February 27th one. Um, February, what comments? When you spoke as a resident under public comment, um, you read from the statement for that and you said you'd get me a copy. add that letter to the minutes? Yeah. Well, it wasn't a letter, it was just my, my notes. You want my notes? Yep, whatever. Because it whatever has a lot of other stuff in there, too. Whatever it was that you okay. spoke as a resident. Thank you. All right, moving on to the public hearing. Proposed fiscal year 2017-18 budget. Mm -hmm. Did we I say? don't think we voted on that motion. motion. I, you and, okay. I have a motion by you, All right, yeah. Commissioner Mantle. All right, second. all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Next is a proposed fiscal year 2017-18 budget <coughs> public hearing. Do you want to talk about it first before we open it? Sure. We had the, this is the same uh, budget that we introduced at the last commission meeting. Um, it includes the, the, the millage So in including that millage, it will help to uh, make a $175,000 transfer to the pension stabilization fund from the general fund. That's about it. Um, see, we're going to be spending a lot of Mary Cretan's money. We're trying to bring, we're going to bring that fund balance down in the Mary Cretans Fund, so we're at right about uh, um, one year balance. We are a little above that, so we'll keep it to a one year balance because we did have a, have, a, have a year when the market tanked and we didn't get any money, so that way we'll be able to, uh, to absorb any market fluctuations. Is there any questions from the commissioners? Okay, if not, I guess we'll open the public hearing. We'll open the public hearing for the budget. So it's open now. If anyone would like to talk about it, come up to the podium. It is closed now. Any discussion? I would really, <coughs> I would really like some clarification on the 1.8 mills. Um, my understanding, this was voted on back in the 70s, 1979, and I think somewhere in there. I don't. If this was an operating millage, I don't understand why we as commissioners have to approve it. Why is it not automatically a part of? The city's millage. Um, I've tried to find answers on it, and I, I, I can't get any answers. And for that reason, I can't approve it because I, I don't understand where it's coming. We tried to find answers too. We tried for better part of two days, looking through old documents. Well, I guess my my main concern with it is, from what I understand, is it was thought to be for the solid waste. Which is fine. You can you can have a millage for that until you start charging fees for it. So that's why we dropped that millage three or four years ago. Whenever we dropped it, 
from my understanding, past commission said we need to find a way to increase revenue in the city, and we've come to find out that this millage was passed for operations of the city, but nobody can show me any documentation on that. And until I can see that set in stone, I don't feel comfortable passing a 1.8 millage onto the taxpayer. Not without their consent or a vote on it. Again, you know, if this was <laughs> voted on in 1970s and now we're talking about dragging it back up in 2017, and we didn't pass it last year, pretty much for the same reason. We actually had a couple of commissioners in the past recalled because of this millage. The one, the, the one time that they specified what it was for, it was was when they specified it was the fire, another public safety officer, to get back to the nine full time CSOs, and that was what, two years ago. But that's when we had the recall. Yeah. Yeah. That was after the recall. That was the next year after. It's never been in effect since then. The, the, um, the recall was stated um, originally, the <coughs> original petition, which did not pass the clarity hearing and for legality of it, was because he said um, that you had to have a public hearing for that. That was untrue. Um, you don't have to have a public hearing on that. You have a public hearing on your budget, which tells the millage that you're levying, which the city did do. Um, they did state at that, pub that public hearing for the budget that year that they were le levying 15 mil. 15 millage. Um, so he had to submit another petition that passed the clarity hearing that said um, because because you guys passed the 1.8, it wasn't a matter of if it was legal or not, just because you raised taxes, um, was what that recall was for. Well, I guess to my, back to my point is, if, if this is a part of the city's regular millage, why is it something that we as commissioners have to vote on? If this was already voted on by the people and approved, why does it keep coming before us? I, I wasn't part of with the research that was done this last week as I was at a conference, but um, you'd have to either look at getting an attorney opinion to look at back in the history of that or find um, if it's state legislation, you're not going to find it in our charter. If the state legislation gives you authority to do that in addition to your regular operating mills, um, that would be how your authority on that. I can't cite that, you know, at this point right now without any... Um, research or <coughs> and I don't claim to be an attorney so um, that's that's something that might need to but be at looked one point into did we not do the research on this when we were asked I believe previous administration did that at the time of bringing it back and um, I believe from the conversations with that 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 manager found evidence that he you could in fact do it and that's why it was proceeded why, why was the millage originally dropped because of the solid waste, the, uh, the fee being applied to the, to the residents, or was it something else? It was a commission decision to go to a user fee based for that. The question that came up after that when they wanted to bring it back was, could they use it for operations? And that was said yes, and that's why they brought it back, and the commission voted to put that in place. That was so, 2015, and then right. about 16 last year, um, the commission voted it down, so they didn't have it last year. So now we're at six years. So there's a total of three years, I believe, three fiscal years that it was not actually levied, and it's been yeah. levied since the 70s. I believe it was 13 and 14, it wasn't levied. They levied, levied it in 15 and got recalled, and then we didn't have it in that. Right. <coughs> We don't have a separate public hearing for that later, do we? No, this is the time when you're telling the public what millage rate you're levying to fund this, this budget but and what year, revenues. La last year we passed the budget at this time. And With then it in there. A period later we did to not. To pass the L4029 form that comes out from the state treasury, that 2017 form follows their fiscal year, so it's not even available for you to sign right now. But that, what that is, is approving that form and authorizing that form, which states the millage you're levying. So at the budget year, this time last year, you did approve a budget levying 15 mils. And you had a public hearing on that, just as you're doing tonight. Um, but when it came time in June 
to approve the form that states how many you're levying, the commission decided not to. And then through there, we, we use fund balance to, to fund that. Resulted in a drop in fund balance to balance the budget. Correct. I, I, I get to see that myself. I mean, every time I look at the fund balance is increased. <coughs> That's what I don't understand. Well, from it not being voted in last year, you'll see that in this, this year's fiscal budget. year. Ends at the end of this week. <coughs> the draw from the fund balance to balance last year's budget that will be reflected on the close of this week. year that ends this right. at the end of this week. Other things affect that is if you know things came in better than we thought, less expensive, you know, that affects it as well. But I guess it allows us to keep everything maintaining that payment. Well, but the biggest the biggest reason for doing this is for the pension stabilization fund, and in my opinion, we're basically punishing the taxpayers for poor decision making in the past. But this was something that should have been addressed a long time ago. It needs to be addressed. It does need to be addressed. I agree. Not just with taxes. Right. And, and that's where I have an issue with it, not only with, with the millage and how it's going to be used, but also in the budget when I went through it, the discretional spending policy of the city. I'm not very in tune with how much each department can spend discretionally. And we tried at one time to discuss it, but I think the limit is way too high and multiple times when I seen some of the items in the budget on the cost projected for purchasing things was inflated above and beyond what I consider reasonable. And then it was told that we could, that that, that extra money budgeted will be at the discretion of the department. And I think we need to rein in on that extra discretional spending that way somehow and and I was also informed that once we pass a budget we shouldn't have any more say in how the money's spent because we looked at the budget it's there we let the city go to work and do their magic and, and I kind of believe that so I have a hard time passing something that has so much diversity and how everyone can spend extra money I'd like to see it earmarked, or actually it reined in. I, I would like to see something like, you know, you have a $1,250 limit for the whole year, except in emergencies without coming to the commission and letting us know what you're spending it on. Because there's been four, $5,000 expenditures, or just under, on a lot of things that I don't consider the citizens have talked to me about being high priority. Because I think MERS, other post-employment benefits, our debt, we're not concentrating enough on, on that area without going back after the citizens on a new tax. Or not a new tax, but an additional tax on their property for the business and when we can actually rein in some of the costs by a little better decision making on where we spend our money. We're talking about $175,000. I don't know if there's, I don't think there's discretionary spending. I don't that. know. I, I never get a record of it. That's the thing. Well, we had, there were several budget meetings, I think, when we went through all the departments and looked at everything. Was there a certain department you were concerned about? No. We well, went through each department, everything, all the capital items were purchased. Didn't we? No, but I asked if if you have an item that's $5,000 and it costs 1000 for that item, what happens to the other 4000 that we approve in the budget? You'll see that when you look at the budget amendments. Well, it's it's just it becomes discretional spending, whatever they feel they need to spend it on. Correct. Nobody wastes money like that. We're not we're not. I'm not saying they waste money. It's just setting priorities. I, I'm just giving you you know my opinion and what I've read and what I've seen. I think in this year's budget amendments, there's a lot of uh, things that came in under cost, didn't they? Yeah. Looking through that. There were several things 
couple of thousands of dollars in several departments that came in under cost. So those especially on, on especially on construction projects, you have to plan for contingencies, which is you know, 15, 20 percent you have to add on to a project. I, I understand that. I'm not questioning that. O okay, like, did we not alleviate the debt from the campground? tune of how much a year was that? And it should be going on for how many more years? I'm, I'm just trying to... That was, yeah, that was in... Uh, that was last year. That was in December of 2015, and that was a motion by Commissioner O'Connor to use... O'Connor to use electric fund money. And we did, and, and I'm not questioning that part of it. To pay a bunch of general fund debt out. Right, we paid that, we paid... Yeah, a bunch of... Yeah, the yeah. equipment fund... Yacht Harbor, the campground. So the equipment fund is in general fund, but well, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying we the, use we yeah. use other revenue from from our enterprising fund to pay all that off. And, and and I remember speaking at that point that good. That debt'll be gone. These departments can allocate that additional amount of money of them payments into our MERS. I figured out that the payments were about twenty thousand dollars, give or take a, something. I don't know if anyone knows that on, on the staff. I'd have to go back and look at. But that would that would free up. That would be, that should free up out of them departments eighty thousand dollars just from them two items, the, the campground and the yacht harbor, to be paying into MERS into our stabilization fund, and they do have fund balances to cover it. Because if we didn't do that with the with the citizens' money out of the electrical funds, they would be paying that now. So <coughs> part of that is the general fund, correct? And then we're adding 170 thousand. I mean, part of that is the equipment fund, which is not in the general fund. Then we're adding 170 thousand dollars to <coughs> the pension stabilization fund. Plus, we had 10 offices. Right now, we're down to eight. So we were paying for the extra police officer, which was approved two years ago. Plus, we're putting money into pension stabilization. Well, I, the lion's share of the of the pension and the OPEB expenses are general fund. So we're going to have to do something. We're going to have to either cut a lot of stuff, or we're going to have to get some tax revenue. Yeah, but when I looked at when I looked at the funds, I, I typed them all out because I, I learned better by hands on and reading it. When I when I typed everything out and put it in a spreadsheet, there was plenty of funds in both of them departments by not paying that obligation that we as citizens already paid for them to continue paying it without going back after the citizens for an additional tax for it. That, that's how I'm looking at it. Mm -hmm. The the funds are there, and if you even and what I did is I took. I looked at them funds, and I took out their, what I figured the payment would be around twenty thousand, and it still left them with. Oh, actually, no, I took forty thousand out because I took for two years. They still had at least that much, or if not more, in them funds as a fund balance at the end of the 2017-18 se uh, budget season. The campground usually. Eighty thousand. A little revenue from the campground would get eighty to about eighty thousand dollars a year. Depending on what our expenses are, um, we and budgeted one hundred and forty in revenue this year, so and then less our expenses. So I think net for this year was about eighty thousand. I mm -hmm. was going to try to get the exact number, yeah. but it was around there. I'm just saying the money's there without taxing the citizens, at least to be doing that close to that hundred thousand dollars from that. 1.86 mils tax, unless I'm figuring something wrong. I have the figures, but I'd have to dig them out, and I don't want to. I mean, I have a chart that shows it. 1.8 mil actually levies about 170, between 175 and 100. But only 100,000 is going for the uh, pension stabilization. Going from 175 to 175. What, all, all going to that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we have to, do we have to, 
levied the whole amount? That's, that would be my other question. Keep the pension stabilization fund funded how we have it planned out. No, no, that, by not putting the whole burden on all the taxpayers. That's what I'm looking at. Because this, this stuff should have been handled since the crash of the market in 2008. Over the next few years after that, it, it should have been kind of looked at a little bit and said, hey, we need to hone in on this somehow, some way where everybody takes a part in paying for the bad market, I guess. Right now, we're just keep, we keep throwing it right back on the citizens. We, we want to charge them the full amount. And I think these... We're going to reach a point in the next couple, next four, four or five years when the utilities have paid their share of the pension stabilization fund and all the debt to that fund is going to be generous. So I don't know what can you do at that time. Is it better to hit, go back to what the tax slowly pay that off or wait four or five years and have to increase taxes by a large increment in order for it to make sense. Well, to tell you the truth, I had a lot of citizens tell me they don't mind the tax increase. But I had much more tell me that it would be a burdensome on them under, under, under budgets. They haven't got raises. They haven't uh, have we st stayed up with a lot of things. Have we heard anything from MERS on whether they're going to spread the amount of time out? I think that would be a good compromise for our citizens. Because the money is there. It's literally there. If, if you budget, if, if the budget that was given to me to, that well, I looked have, at. We'd have to sit down, we'd have to sit down and, and make some, uh, make some cuts then. You have a, Eric, but I guess what I, maybe maybe my understanding is not up to the same as yours. But when I looked at what you took out of each budget, is the harbor an enterprise fund? Yes. Yeah. Yep. You can't take money from it. Not unless somebody from the harbor is on the MERS medical. Yeah. I mean, you can't take. You can't take money from the enterprise fund to pay into the general fund on the MERS debt. We we were looking at that. I don't know if we adjusted that because we were talking because Joe Delin is still is MERS and he he was part of the harbor and developing the harbor. Joe is Delin. So we would be able to do some of the former. Uh, you, you can take a part of it, Joe. Whatever whatever their obligation is to the yeah. MERS debt, they, they're liable for. So we well, are we allowed to take the other utility funds? Sure, because they have people that are. Well, and pay off the harbor fund. I guess I'm, I'm mixed up because we've done one thing and now we can't do it backwards. We, we gave them money, right? We gave the campground what a hundred thousand? Does anyone know how much? Eighty thousand? I don't remember what the total was. That was it at least eighty thousand, hundred thousand dollars? Total amount of debt that was that was. Uh, I mean, we paid off the garbage truck or the garbage cans, the yeah, campground, the yacht harbor, the uh, public it was, safety it was building. Over five hundred thousand dollars. The total amount that was that was uh, it was big, and that was kind of like my rookie year. And when I what I realized what what I what I was hoping we were doing is alleviating that debt from them departments for them to come back. Have that extra twenty thousand or twenty four thousand dollars, whatever the payment was, for us to to work. And that money is available in your fund balance, as you see on each of the funds. So if you use that fund balance for something else or directed, if you look at when we went through at the budget workshops, um, going over each fund balance of what's available, you have that much to put towards something. So if the money you you forgave the loan. They didn't spend the money on making that loan payment, but it's in the fund balance. That's where you see that money. But then we can't use that fund balance to go into the general fund to... to general fund balance is general fund balance, and you can use that for whatever, but you've been using it. So. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, it's so eventually it's going down. Um, the budget transfer from fund balance proposed for ending 331-2017 is to use 228946 of that fund balance. Of the general fund? Right, leaving mm -hmm. two months reserved. 350000 that's leaving you 
an available balance of 124857 in your fund balance, in your general fund balance. What do we do with the fund balance in the other enterprises? What, what, what Whatever can that the money commission be decides, it it can't, that's they what can't you can't be moved into general you can't fund move uses. Them, right. Ever? Mm -hmm. Ever. But within that fund, so you can utility funds you can't go into. No. no. Have we ever done that? Have we done that since I've been on the commission? For half a million dollars was a transfer. Mm -hmm. Do we have to ask for it back? That was that through debt. That was through. Debt forgiveness on the loans. Yeah. See, that's where I get kind of mixed up because we've done it, and now I, I looked at it and I thought, well, let's do it again. And I guess two wrongs don't make a right. So if we can't do it, but, but then we've we been, can't. We've been advised by, by by council to use the silo approach, and we're paying the, 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 the pension stabilization fund from the OPEB. We're paying according to where the person worked, paying categories right now. On the electric fund, he's paying just for electric fund employees, water. This year we have electric water, wastewater, and s solid waste are all putting money into the pension stabilization fund as well as, as, the, um, as the general fund. And I know, I know, in, Another area, too, is to look at the plans we have. I think that's real important. Just to discuss. I'm not saying you have to change anything, but if you have all your options laid out on what it costs, what we're paying for everything, and then do some demographic looking at what other cities have done, to really see how much savings can be done there when we spread the cost among citizens and the employees? I know that's a tough issue because well, I know, think the point we're at right now, Steve, is we've got four days to approve a budget. We have to have a budget in place in four days. This okay. has been done a long time, and I agree with you. Well, we don't talk. We talked. We had six meetings. We had six meetings. We had five budget meetings. I realize that. But, but the thing is. is my, my question is on the millage itself. I, I, I question the legality. That's why I can't vote for this. I don't so much have a problem with the budget. I have a problem with the 15 mil. I, 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 can't, I can't wrap my head around that 1.8 mil. Just because they found in the past that they could use it for operations, when before that they thought it was for something else and nobody can show me documentation on it, I can't feel comfortable passing that millage on to the people. Until I can see that's written in stone, I can't vote yes on it. And that's where I'm at, and I won't. Now, I, I've asked, and nobody can tell me. I mean, I've had conversations with Vicki, and she's trying to tell me you know, what she remembers of the history of it and everything else. But somewhere there's got to be a ballot from when this was voted on. Somewhere we if did it was if it was state legislation, there you know um, that would have been passed through a public act, and there wouldn't have been a ballot necessarily on that. But I don't From know. My that. understanding, this was voted on in the seventies by the taxpayers, and we're just putting it back on them again. That's, by the that's voters. That's what I'm understanding. You can direct to to do research and whatever, but I I think there's two confusing things there about the ballot as far as transferring funds um, and surplus money. That was a voted ballot item by the citizens of Gladstone. If this was a voted thing and a ballot, or if it was state legislation, I'm saying I don't, if it was a public act, the, the city of Gladstone residents wouldn't have voted on that if it was passed by their state legislators. So those, are, those would be two different ways um, to do that. Um, if you can do research and we can look into it, but this, this budget does need to get approved um, by March 31st. So. Tonight you have the decision to make, is, are you levying 15 mils or, or are you levying the lesser amount? And if it's a lesser amount, then you, you need to um, amend the budget to reflect that. So we can continue to do research on that, but you have to make a decision um, tonight or by March 31st. And, and no disrespect, um, Dave, the request came at a time when Kim was out of the office, so the rest of us were trying to <laughs> research this. And it, we did spend the three days, you know, that notice that we had looking for that information. 
you know, diligent well, in looking. I, I mean, I understand. I, I sent the you an email just last week, but I've asked this question many, many times, and I've never gotten an answer. Mm. Yes, I, I formally emailed you last week, but there's been many times, even last year I asked about it, and still have not gotten an answer. And, and previous management looked into that, and the ruling was, and I don't know the, I haven't seen the document or, or the research of that, but was that we should levy it. This, this management <coughs> or whatever would have to look into that, so. Mm -hmm. Those are two, you know, two different things. We can look into that, certainly, but it's not gonna help this then. Right. And that's what I'm saying. I, I'm, my vote is no. Yep, and that absolutely can be, but tonight, if it's not, something has to be either passed or a special meeting or something by March 31st to get a budget in place. It does have to reflect whatever you approve. What what millage are you loving? Because I think we had, you know, in the workshops we had looked at, you know, keeping the MERS stabilization payment, continuing that so we didn't have to pay an increase three, four years from now. We had the money there to fund that and then maintaining the public safety net. Right. Is the officer retiring? That's a, that's, that's a cost, and the service, I think the citizens, you know. Well, then we need to start looking at wants and needs. You know, there's, there's money to be cut from somewhere. If, if the lion's share of this liability falls on the general fund, then we need to look at all the departments in the general fund and see where we can make cuts to fund this. My honest opinion. There can be cuts made in parks and recreation. There may be able to be cuts made in community development. I don't know what we can do with public safety. I don't want to. I don't want to lessen the force at all. You can't. You can't deny them money they need to operate. They are the biggest burden to the general fund, but they're a necessity. So that's where you weigh your wants and needs. You take from the wants and you maintain the needs. <coughs> There's money to be cut there. I mean, it, it, with, without passing this, passing the buck to the taxpayers. In the situation we're in right now with the city, we need all the support from the taxpayers we can get, from my standpoint. I mean, I'm not speaking for you guys, but I don't think imposing more tax on the taxpayers is going to get them on our side. I can remember last year we had somebody speak up to us about prioritizing it. And that was one of our. It was a wants and needs. And that was a goal for our commission this year to get that under wraps, and we never even looked at it. There's been a lot going on. I mean, there's. I know. We, we've got we got a lot on our plate, and I mean, I hope everybody understands that. And I hope everybody realizes, you know, that as a public, we're not here to try and take anything away from anybody. I'm a taxpayer in this town too. I don't want to pay any more in taxes. If there's a way we can prevent that from happening. Rest assured, we're going to do that. But the city does need to operate, too. You know, so you're, it's kind of a catch-22. You know, you're either going to give up some services, you know, you're going to, you, you, might, you might lose some funding to parks and recreation or community development or public safety. What are we willing to give up? Are we willing to give that up for lower taxes, or do we want to pay the extra taxes and keep what we have? I mean, personally, I think public safety is important. They're on the need side. There's other departments where it's a lot of wants, and that's where we need to make our cuts if we're going to make our cuts. What's next? I think we can go to a vote, but I don't think it's going to do us any good. <laughs> Someone want to make a motion on council? This has to be. Is this this has to be a majority vote? Correct? Yep. Yep. Simple majority. So if it's, so if it's a split vote tonight, the motion yeah. fails. The motion fails. And you have to sit here until you can come to an agreement or schedule another meeting, um, either a work session or another special meeting. Another but a budget session. has to be adopted March thirty first. March thirty first. Which is Thursday. Thursday. Hmm. Friday. 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 Hmm. Friday. 
can you pass preferably first? No, just kidding. And when you do, like I said, the millage rate has to be be part of your motion. Commissioner Thompson, you brought up time for a vote. Is there any time on vote? What happens if you don't have it passed by the 31st? Is there a penalty? Yes, there are problems. What is the penalty? I don't know all of the penalties. We've never arrived at that. <laughs> We've been working on this now for how many months? I mean, you know, for the state to treasury to look at us and say you can't get a budget passed by March 31st. You know, you this <laughs> year doesn't mention change. of you know things that have been done in the past and pushed to push to the present. I don't know if making holding things back, restraining things, and trying to creep by, waiting for things to get better is what we need what we need to do Th is this is this what I would like to do not necessarily I don't want to raise my taxes either is it what we need to do n now today so future commissions can say they did the right thing and they're not sitting in a position that we are today I think it is um, there are wants and needs as you mentioned and I also think one of the you know we want to keep all the services we want to keep the recreation availability and that part of the city is I think a source of pride also as you know as is the public safety as a need also but you know we one thing we did we didn't raise any fees we didn't raise any any fees on anything to you know cover the costs of no so that's that's a plus there was a reason for I think that's a, a plus, though. Again, this year, that those main, that that's showing that those departments are running, those enterprise departments are running, within their budget. So we have a rate study coming up, and we'll find out. And and we w went through a lot of things. I know the equipment fund and DPW, and that they're looking at <coughs> investing the the city of a lot of carrying a lot of burden of capital equipment, and le working through lease agreements and stuff for for the equipment, which lessens the burden on the, s the city for those items um, you know if you look at the if you look at the budget for the parks and rec a lot of that money is right out of the Cretan store you know a lot, a lot of things there yeah. oh yeah it's about a hundred thousand for the general fund that's rec department is cost it's huge it's cost the same amount for the last 10 12 years or so it, it's been My records went back, and that was the average. And you also have to take into consideration that with the projects that go on, other other departments do benefit from that. You know, the intersection, what was that, $500,000? That was due to a recreational project. So if it did cost a ton of money, commissioner view, then it was actually paid off, you know, I would say with the $500,000 road project that it brought in. So there's there's different things you have. You, I, can't I voted for that. The, yeah, you can't look at just the cost of that. I don't. I don't look at okay. that. Okay. Well, <coughs> that's the way I'm looking at it. We want to continue to be the year-round playground and have full-time 24-hour coverage with public safety. We need this millage. <coughs> start cutting. That's what it basically boils down to. Mm -hmm. so we're going to have to increase the amount the general fund puts into the pension stabilization fund. Is the money there? Not right now. I mean, is it, will, it, will it be there in order to do that for this year? For this year it will be. Not this year ending it. You're starting with this budget, it will be. I mean, without, 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 the, without that 1.86 <coughs> mills or whatever, it won't be there? Mm -hmm. We're saying? taking money from fund balance. Is what, well, that's what I meant. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, how much would be in fund balance? 125000 
close enough to know exactly how, well, I know we're not close enough to know exactly what would um, fund balance. Well, with the, the budget amendments that we are going to be talking about later on in the meeting, um, we'll be borrowing, we have budgeted to borrow to about 230000 and with the budget amendments, we're going to be down to about 220000 um, so our ending fund balance projected is about 483 and we're instructed to have three months operating budget which is 350,000 so you have about 100,000 to play with in your savings so we're going to end at about 483 is what you're projecting the fund balance Mm -hmm. At the end, of, at the where end did of we start? At five hundred thousand. Um, seven hundred and three, or seven hundred four thousand. Not at the beginning of two thousand sixteen. That was at three thirty one two thousand sixteen. Mm -hmm. So if we're finishing up the sixteen seventeen budget. Mm -hmm. So you're taking you're taking about two hundred twenty thousand. And then you have to take out the 350000 reserve that we have to keep. And then that's your ending fund balance, your savings account that you can, um, that you can, that's available for you to use. I don't think we want to keep doing it. We can't keep doing that. There's not going to be any money there. general fund. I don't know if we have, do we make $100,000 in cuts? Mm -hmm. I'm sure we can. We close it, I don't know, we'd have to, there'd, there'd my be problem, a lot of, my problem, a lot is, of my problem is with passing the village itself. I don't care, you know, if, it, if you can show me that we can legally do this and you can show me where this comes from, I wouldn't have such a problem with it. But I can't get a straight answer on that. I'm not going to pass something I know nothing about. I think the legality of it is in question, is it? I mean, of just your sort of the Where did it come from? Right. We can get an attorney opinion on it to look into it. Um, we won't have that by Friday. <laughs> I'd make a motion discussing this a lot and we'll see where it goes but I'd make a motion that we approve the budget as presented with revenue based on the 15.5021 mills I support motion by Commissioner Manless support by Mayor Bostic to approve the budget as presented any more discussion yeah if we approve it do we still have to pass the millage yes just this well, you have to. Last this year we didn't. Right, and, and you, that was then done through a budget amendment. That's why you're using your that amount of fund balance. That's why I said. What makes it different from this year and last year? Because last year in October you changed your mind and didn't authorize it for the L4029 that had to be submitted to the state, which then resulted in a budget amendment which is using, which chose to use your fund balance, which is that $220,000, or part of that $220,000. So if you don't have, if, if, if you don't levy 15, you have to, you have to pass a balanced budget, so you'll have to make cuts at the lower levy. No, historically, the budget is approved and the revenue based, the revenue collected based on the millage is what is approved by the commission. The form that is submitted to the county treasurer, county assessor's office in June technically does not need to be brought to the commission for approval. Um, that's just something that prior management did 
and that's how the confusion between passing the budget and then the change in the millage rate happened. What, what, what is our millage rate right now? We are allowed. I mean, what, what our you know, for the last budget, for the last budget, what was it? It wasn't one, uh, 15.502, what is it? The fiscal year that we are finishing up right now is 13.6785. 785, okay. Mm -hmm. There is one other step in the process of this after a budget is approved. There is an appropriation ordinance that comes before the commission each and every year that you pass, and that also spells out the revenues, not just from tax levy, but you know, with others that spell that out as well that the commission approves. Um, so there is a whole process, you know, that follows that. So, but the L forty nine is just a paperwork and authorized by. This is where you you levy. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? All, right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. Commissioner Manila? Yes. Commissioner Phelan? No. Commissioner Thompson is absent and excused. Commissioner View? No. Mayor Bostwick? Yes. Motion fails. Okay, I'd like to make them. I, I, I move that we approve the budget with a workshop later to make the appropriate cuts to run that budget on 13.6785 mills. What date would that workshop be? Whenever we can get all the, I don't have a date off hand right now. You have now. to have a date, I need 18 hours um, notice for the workshop and then you would also need to schedule a special meeting because you, you cannot make a motion, you know, you can't pass anything at a work session, so. You well, need can I amend my emotion just to, to approve to uh, have the budget run on? I'll move that we have. I withdraw my emotion. Okay. And I'll, I move that we approve 13.6785 mills to run our city. This Why? budget doesn't meet that millage. You'd have to show the cuts to have. You have to pass the balanced budget, and the 13.6785 does not. Right. So I can't do that either. You can if you list the, the cuts so that it's a balanced budget for tonight. So it has to be balanced tonight? We have well, if you, you can't you pass them. You, you can't present one without it being balanced. You right. have to pass the balanced budget. That's so why. So whether whatever your millage rate is that you're levying and then if you're whatever you're removing or if you're planning on taking that from fund balance. But it has to be a balanced budget. Well, wouldn't it be balanced if we use fund balance money? It's like some people have big fat bank accounts at certain times of the year and other times it gets down low and then you try to economize and build it back up. I mean, can't the budget be balanced with this millage rate and continue everything as we have now that is written? You'd yep. be taking about another 170000 from funding. Well, it can be done then. You would get below your $350,000. Is that a mandated by law or is that a that commission? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm just saying we, we can adjust that. So you wouldn't be following your own policy? We don't anyways. Many <laughs> no, many times we, we, we amend our policies. The commission has the right to veer from their policy, but it has to be a motion of the full board to, to do no, that. So no, I know. We have a motion on the table or a partial motion for a budget of 13.6785 mills. I, I think it can be done. Somebody will second it. We'll see if it goes. I, I think it can be done using the fund balance right now. Okay, so the rest of your motion is 13.6785 mills using fund balance to budget. Correct. Support that. Mm -hmm. I've got a motion by Commissioner View, support by Commissioner Phelan. Keep it at what, the 13.6785? Yep, 6785. Use it from the fund balance. Fund balance. We, get, we got a lot of issues we got to work on, and, I, and this gives us a balanced budget right now. Without the, the new tax revenue until we get some answers on that. Any more discussion? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Commissioner View? Yes. Commissioner Phelan? Yes. Commissioner Manila? No. Commissioner Thompson is absent and excused. Mayor Bostwick? No. Motion fails for lack of support. I make a motion that we have a special meeting on Friday. Are they? Friday? No, with Friday we it's the thirty first. That's our last day. <laughs> what time? Any time on Friday. I'll be back Thursday okay. night. Well I'll make a motion. <laughs> Make a motion at Friday at what, like ten and one. Eight. Any one. need a support? Yeah. I'll support. I'll be here at ten and one. No. Okay. All right. Motion by Mayor Boswick. Support by Commissioner View for a special meeting March thirty first at ten and one. Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Next up is the unfinished business city manager vacation. Yeah, back in October, I asked for an extension on vacation, and uh, I, I haven't been able to use vacation. I wasn't able to take any time off when I was sick. I worked a couple holidays. I just, not after this budget stuff gets done I'll be able to the city manager stuff I should be able to use vacation I just wanted to ask him for an additional 25 hours which I will use prior to December this year season and vacation where are you at right now What's the maximum uh, employees can carry? 275. But we increased it from yeah. 10 on the No, no, I, I realize that. And when right. I read that, I, I thought you made the motion to increase it, but it had to be used up by a certain time. If you look back at the... It's it supposed to be used up by the end of the fiscal year, which is Friday, and there's no way I can do that. There hasn't been any way. I mean, there's been between the city manager search getting stretched out and the budget for contracts, and I haven't been able to take any time off. I thought I've, I've, I have worked over over well over a hundred extra comp hours, which I'll never use. I never took any sick leave when I was sick. I work. I'm not complaining. I'm just asking for. Just asking for extension to, to use it up. Yeah, up. yeah. If you go to, well, isn't this changing the policy? This is a negotiation with your interim city manager, so it's different from the regular employees. This is this is a part of personnel policy. It would be the same. policies are established for everybody. I realize that. And yet in the in the letter here, Eric, you said you're saying the getting the goal of getting it back down to two seventy five by the end of the year. Yeah. Do you want to use some of that up I'll by the end of this calendar by year? By the end of the calendar, calendar year. year. Are you taking a week's vacation this week, right? Yeah. So after after next week we'll be going to about three hundred and twenty. Right? Yeah. Where do we 
Where did we put your cutoff right now at 300? You'll be under that anyway. I just, I don't know what the rest of this year is going to bring. I just, I'm the option of not losing any more time. I, I think that's a fair statement. I, I just feel that there are alternatives and you can take time. You don't have a time. Yeah. I have yeah. not had a chance to take time. I came in when I was sick because of union negotiations and working on the budget. And there has not been time. What happens to every other employee if they go over the maximum? I don't know if anyone's ever maxed out before in the past for extensions, yeah. extenuating circumstances. It just doesn't happen very often. Previous city managers, there has been adjustments made to their, their vacation time. They've been paid out for the time that they would have lost. Um, and not been able to use. So this is. So the city has paid him out instead of letting him use it. Right. And he's so asking to use it. Right. And this was an agreement made under the interim city manager position, not as a regular employee. So there is a difference with, with that versus. <laughs> he's just asking to use it. Are you also asking to extend it, extend it by 25 hours, too, by way of what I'm reading here? Yeah, I'm not seeing that it, it's needed. I just don't want to have to go and revisit. So you'd be okay with sticking with the 350? Or I guess I'm not quite following the request. Oh, yeah, if I can use the 10 hours I, he's lost, he's got paid for me. You get 10 hours on vacation? No, I mean the last two days there. <coughs> So, what, what what are you at right now? You're, you're talking. We we let, we allowed you to go to three fifty. We actually owe you three sixty. You lost ten hours. Right. I am at. Yes, sixty hours. Lost ten hours to date. The last two pay periods. Forty six hours and six days. Two hours flex time, and I work one hour. I put in about extra days. Still can't do it. By the, by the end of the year. Time should be freed up here after the budget. Yes. Um, I mean, I'm looking at it right now. If they allowed you to go 360, I mean, you're taking a week off here too. So you're taking this probably yeah. a little week off. I'd be happy with the 350. And then that'll put you back on the EMS. that we allow Eric his 360 hours with the condition that he takes the 40 hours next week vacation and puts him back under the limit and come back to 320 hours. Mm -hmm. To be used by, to be, to be gotten back down to 275 by the end of the year. That's part. Um, should be allowed 360 to use 40 hours of vacation next week to bring him down to 320 um, to um, also to be used to get down to the maximum of below 275 by December 31st 2017 yes that's support all right so we got motion by Commissioner Phelan support by Commissioner Mantela any more discussion all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed motion carries I throw this into the record to our thoughts on that too. So Can you I'll read them for the record? Yeah. I'll just 
Are they on this agenda item? Yep. Then they should be read into the record. Do you want me to read the whole thing? Sure. Okay. It's got today's date on it, March 27, 2017. Gladstone rules, policy, and procedure extending maximum accumulated vacation. What do I think? Policies are established by the Gladstone City Commission to ensure that the same procedures and standards are applied to everyone. The written policies set guidelines for ethics, safety, privacy, <coughs> workplace issues, citizen services, among other things. Investigation and analysis. What are the policies for the maximum time accrued for employees? Does the policy support the city's objectives? If not, should it be modified? City policies should not maintain a sharp distinction between supervisors and subordinates. Bad behaviors are the results of a policy in which different rules apply to supervisors than to subordinates. Do not encourage office politics and pay favorites over one position compared to another. What are the values and benefit to the city? Measurable savings and expenses to the city. Can you list other workable alternatives? Evaluate, evaluate level of need for the change. Provide real evidence to support policy change, including past 12 months record of paid time off. General processing of ideas. Expectations from the policy and rules of our city, including favorites for the workforce, can put an employer at risk of charges of favoritism and discrimination. The changing of city policy should require consideration and planning with a clear and concise presentation of the facts. Alternating policies back and forth on any given moment can be problematic with our integrity. Do the right thing means comply with both the letter and the spirit of applicable laws, policies, rules, and regulations. Be dependent, impartial, and fair for the public good not for the gain of any private individual or someone's own personal interests. Needs equal treatment for all persons, claims, and trans transactions before coming, coming before our commission. Remember, I voted in favor of this, for him to take his time off. And I think this is something we as a commission need to look at. But I, I think it, that doesn't apply to past practice. Was he's he's it a does city man it doesn't apply to me because he's a city manager. Personnel policy is for the staff. He's he's running the city right now, and I can attest to the fact that we've been working very hard because no, I'm on the union negotiation teams and we've been meeting two, three, four times a week after hours after he's supposed to be done. Okay. My my one comment was past practice was to pay the city manager if he was unable to use his vacation during times, trying times, budget times, or whatever. I, I supported I, it. I, I, I know. I elected to ask for an extension because we're going through union negotiations, and I didn't want to throw dollar figures out there. And I didn't think that was the right thing to do. I thought this was the, the correct thing to do. And I supported it. All right, moving on to the budget amendment for fiscal year 2016-17. Um, before you, you have the final round of 1617 budget amendments. According to Public Act 621, we need to amend any departments that are overspent. Um, I always like to offset it by amending revenue as well. So if one of our line items, one of our revenue line items excelled, we collected more, I always like to amend that up. So then you guys can kind of give a, get a truer picture of what the final fund balance projected will be. So um, for the general fund, which is the first page, um, we are expecting to collect about $137,000 more in revenue. So I reflected that in, in um, amending those line items. Um, and then we have a few line items that that went over. 
um, one is the city manager payroll and that was the pay of the previous city manager um, city assessor contracted services um, that was um, Vicki Esch had to do a little bit of contracting for her AMARS testing that was required by the state which we passed at 100% um, my department the city treasurer we I went a little bit over in legal services and then also contracted services which is the safety training and also computer maintenance the alleys budget went over in material and supplies and also equipment rentals um, and then just moving on it's a total of 134,000 additional expenses but with the offsetting revenue it's a positive to the fund balance of about $3,000 so like I had said before we'll probably be borrowing about 220,000 from fund balance for this fiscal year which was brought down a little bit so we are projecting about almost 500,000 for the fund balance um, major street which is the next one we had a couple departments that went over um, reconstruction surface maintenance sweeping and flushing and grass control um, under reconstruction um, we had two major projects this fiscal year um, one was the Lakeshore Drive intersection and that went over by about 9,000 they ended up extending the construct reconstruction to the intersection um, and then the Michigan Avenue resurfaced and that went over by about 3,500 so he is our the major street fund will be borrowing about 200,000 <coughs> um, we'll probably be doing okay with the next year's fiscal with the next fiscal year's budget because he has about a maintenance he doesn't have any big projects um, in that budget for next year it's just a maintenance budget um, local street there was some um, new construction reconstruction kind of pretty much the same thing as major street um, he did have one large project in local street this year which was Dakota Avenue rebuild and that did go over by $35,000 um, this one local street we're projecting ending fund balance of 7300 um, we are going to use next fiscal year kind of as a recovery um, he has just a, um, a maintenance budget for local street as well so there's no major projects for next fiscal year um, the, the biggest reason on the Dakota Avenue project was when, uh, when they were reconstructing the road they found Concrete was about a foot thicker during sections of that than the, our test holes, and so there was a lot more uh, disposal of concrete. And a lot, a lot more. It almost uh, doubled what was uh, on, the, on the bid estimates. Okay. It was all pit run uh, concrete from the 1930s. And that's, uh, that's what the next time we could do a complete reconstruction of the road we're going to do test fours uh, a lot more frequently than we did on this uh. the next one is capital project fund which is um, fun it, it's a fund where um, if there's a project that all the departments will be working on that is where it is recorded here um, the Bessie concession stand and playground and GIS and it's basically there was no budget initially set up because the project kind kind of started halfway through the fiscal year <coughs> so those are it's just it's just setting up there's no fund balance or anything like that in that, in that fund. basically revenue equals expenses um, the DDA budget um, they had one line item that went over and that was contracted services in the buildings and grounds and that was just um, contracting for the painting of the building they were way under budget in quite a few in the departments 
so they are looking at um, about a hundred and seven thousand dollar plum balance at the end of this fiscal year. Solid waste, he had meter reading and billing payroll um, that went over by fifteen hundred, so we just had to amend that department. Their ending fund balance is about it will be projected at thirty three thousand. Can I ask a question on the DDA? If you had just mm -hmm. bought it, what where are we putting the sale of the building or is that gonna be in this year? That'll be in revenue. Electric fund um, amending for the pension stabilization um, transfer. We went over in safety, line maintenance, and vehicle. I believe the vehicle they purchased the new. Um, I'm looking at Mike for some help here. <laughs> <laughs> They purchased a new piece of equipment. The this is a bucket. Stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Um, their ending fund balance will be at about 2.25 million. The equipment fund. Now this fund I spent quite a bit of time on because I know that we kind of stick um, pay a little bit close attention to this. Um, I. I did amend expenses down because there was quite a few departments where we didn't spend as much or we didn't spend anything at all, but there was money budgeted. <laughs> so we're looking at a decrease of expenses at 113000 So that kind of goes back to Commissioner View's question about if you do not spend what was budgeted, what happens to that money? And that just goes towards your fund balance. That goes into your savings account. So we, we had originally budgeted for a loss in the equipment fund, but after analyzing it, we'll probably be putting about $20,000 into fund balance. So I kind of wanted to give you guys a kind of a truer picture of what the equipment fund will hopefully end up at at the end of this fiscal year. Cemetery Perpetual Care. Um, this is a fund when somebody purchases, purchases a lot, a portion of it goes towards <coughs> continual care of the, the cemetery. There just wasn't an initial budget that was set up for it. Um, so their ending fund balance will be about 270000 Pension stabilization fund, it was a new fund that was established halfway through the fiscal year, so that's just setting up the budget for that. Basically, the only revenue this fiscal year is the transfer from the electric fund. Um, next one is the water fund. And... I don't know if Eric, do you want to review water and wastewater amendment? Yeah, um, it's not a whole lot in the net on um, decreased uh, income and decreased expenses for a net of, it says 11370 but Casey and I look at negatives different way. <laughs> I have it a different formula on my budget. Will actually come out with a net of seventeen thousand five hundred and seventy dollars to the good, but the, we were budgeted budgeting for uh, the, the ninety thousand and change uh, taking from fund balance. So our net from fund balance is going to be about seventy five thousand taking from fund balance for the estimated year. At our fund balance at the end of the year should be about three hundred. Wastewater, um, big change was um, sludge truck. We had to, we were getting a new tank on the sludge truck, and uh, and when they took the old tank off, they found that the double-walled uh, frame.
frame was cracked, and so we ended up buying a new sludge truck. So we did have we did have over a half a million in, in fund balance that we've been saving for our, our plant upgrades. So we took the money right out of there. And estimating our fund balance at the end of the year will be about three hundred and three hundred eighty thousand, three eighty one five basically. Down to three ninety eight. <laughs> yeah, this, that's the key, and I looking at negative numbers typically. It's, it's the, so you're actually looking at 380. It's going to be our yeah our, our fund balance will be uh, right around 381 532. Just wrap it up a little bit. Some of the funds will be putting more into fund balance. Some will be borrowing a little bit more from fund balance. But um, what we're just looking for is a motion to approve the budget amendment. I move that we approve the budget amendment for fiscal year of. I'll support. All right, motion by Commissioner Phelan, support by Commissioner View to approve the budget amendment for fiscal year 2016-17. Any more discussion? I thought it was nice to see the equipment fund in there, positive end. Yeah, I like that. It's a good view. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next up is a DDA facade request for 911 Delta. I'm going to stay here if I could. <laughs> um, so before you, you have a request for a DDA facade um, grant for 911 Delta. That's the new pharmacy building. On March 14th, the DDA approved one grant for that, for that location. The total project costs for the facade are estimated at $30,710. The DDA would be funding up to $7,500. And um, just as a side note, all in, Mr. Demers is looking at right around right around 200000 for the entire, just a slightly over $200,000 to bring that pharmacy into Gladstone. So um, this request before you is to release funds beginning April 1st, 2017. I'll move that we approve the DDA facade request for 911 Delta Avenue in the amount of $7,500. I support. All right, motion by Commissioner View, support by Commissioner Phelan for the DDA facade request for 911 Delta. Any more discussion? Just shows you what the DDA can do for our downtown community. There's a gentleman coming into town, going to spend a couple hundred thousand dollars, offer some good services that we need in our community. And we reward him with a nice new front on his building for a cost of seven thousand five hundred for his total investment. That's how you get the people in your community and build up your uh, e economics development area. I, I just thought I'd make that comment for the people. Did that include the price that he paid for the building? So that yeah, he's got about one hundred eighty-four into renovations, okay. and then and the, the cost of the building on top of that. Great asset. He's not team. done yet, so hopefully he stays within budget. But last time I talked to him, he said it was slightly over budget, but it was because of his wants. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Next up is the reclosure purchase. <coughs> Skip this here in case you have any technical questions. On reclosure. Uh, this is a What's a reclosure? <laughs> it's something about dividing the bluff in half. Sound right? <coughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Instead of the whole bluff being out, when a, a squirrel commits suicide, it'll only be half the bluff. <laughs> 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 and we didn't go with low bid because of uh, the item low bid was a recloser of the type that had never been used or tested before for going set sound right skip you mean uh, the 9000 yeah going to 
going with her, the one that has a, a known track record. Couldn't find anybody who uses it, that where that one's installed or. <coughs> It's double in price, too, eh? Not, yeah, not quite. Yeah. We don't want to be put the, the cheapest one on there. <laughs> it's definitely not the most expensive one. Are the do they all function the same way? Or the, I noticed there's different specs to them here. And the most expensive one's like another, another, yeah, another. Are some of these installed, the same model installed in the city currently? It's ADB? Okay, so you know what you're getting here. Well, I'll make a motion to accept the foreclosure purchase for the amount of $16,811. I'll support. All right, motion by Commissioner Phelan, support by Commissioner Mantua for the reclosure purchase for 16811 for the electric fund. Any more discussion? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is a trench box purchase. <coughs> um, <coughs> equipment. Committee and the safety. I mean, the safety committee. Is, uh, we've been looking at trench boxes off and on for probably 20 years. Um, looking to use um, PPW in their backhoe a lot more often this year, if possible. Um, we would. You know, the water and the wastewater department would use this every time we dig in the alleyways. Um, this is a nice one because it's. it's made out of aluminum so it's light and you can make it any size you want it's a uh, it's pretty neat configuration it's like the erector set you build it to what your hole is going to be and, uh, is this new or used this would be a brand new this was already approved yeah. I believe we approved this yeah this was talking about yeah right I mean yeah. we, we approved for this in the budget yeah, yeah. 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 I think it's a good thing to have. Yeah. You know, anybody Especially if other, it can be used by more than one department, you're saying, right? Yeah. yeah. Use. What are they doing now to meet these safety requirements? Um, for the most part, we're digging the, digging the hole twice the size that, so it's a safe hole at a 45 okay. degree uh, angle back. And with this, you can you can dig dig a hole with straight walls and throw the box, box into in. the ladder and so you would disrupt a lot less uh, oh, that's fine. time yeah. Yeah. digging and then also filling it back in. Right, exactly, finishing it up. I'd make a motion then to purchase the trench box as specified from Efficiency Productions for the amount of $12,210.60 from the Equipment Fund. I'll support. All right, motion by Commissioner Mandela, support by Commissioner View for the trench botch purchase for $12,210.60 from the equipment fund. Any more discussion? With it being aluminum, I, I, would, I would guess that this thing is going to be around for a good 25 years. As long as it doesn't get it damaged still or be here, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, now to E, the closeout the public hearing for the MEDC urgent need grant. So before you, you have a request um, from my department on behalf of the city to hold a public hearing um, at your next regular commission meeting, which would be April 10th. Um, 
in true state fashion, I received two emails last week. This, this project, if you recall, was initiated back in 2013, and we're still working to close out this grant project. Um, the two emails that I received, the one had five requests to complete. The one that I need um, support from the commission is to hold this public hearing. Um, it wasn't stated to us in the beginning that we had to do this. We actually went through our audit report with them and they, they didn't, we talked about it and I pointed out to her that it was not required but we still were requests to complete it um, just to make sure that there, there weren't any, just to note if there was any community input. So in the event that we um, would get urgent need money again, we would be able to incorporate some of that public feedback into our next project. So that's what this request is for and um, if you approve it, we'll get public notice out. Um, the clerk will get that out for us, and we can have the public hearing on April 10th and wrap up one of about 10 more things that they're requiring. Well, I'll move that we have a closeout on a public hearing for the MEDC urgent need grant on April 10th, 2017. I support. All right, motion by Commissioner View, support by Commissioner Phelan have a close out public hearing for the MEDC urgent need grant. We'll have to remind April the public 10th. of the work we actually did. <laughs> it's is at 7, 7 p.m. besides just to throw that in there. <laughs> this is the first time that uh, MEDC has ever made available emergency funds and this is from that, lot, that bad winter we had. And it was all poor street and then the two alleyways that we did. And never worked with them before and they have a lot more fences to dump over than any, any company I've ever worked with. So the good news is we, we did receive about $300,000 from them yeah. and some communities only received $8,000 and they have to do the same amount of work and that's unbelievable to me for eight grand. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is the city manager's report. It was a meeting I passed out. Uh, a little brochure that came in on Friday uh, that our own K&M Industrial that Josh King owns down in the under Delta by the water plant is honored and it's one of the 2017 Michigan 50 companies to watch be eligible, you'd have to be a company that employs between six and 99 full-time equivalent employees and generate between 750,000 and 50 million in annual revenue. Read their wording, companies like K&M Industrial are, sh are known for their exceptional in, the word I can't say, entrepreneurial leadership. <laughs> Whatever. Creation of, of innovation or use of innovation in creative ways in their sustainable competitive advantage. And uh, I'd like to thank Josh for coming here and moving into the city and starting that business. And I know he's really working on getting his dredging permits and getting his, uh, his dock built out there. So it's cool that one of our own communities honor this year. Second thing I passed out was the, the annual economic impact statement from Verso, the Escanaba Mill. The, <coughs> I've never seen one of these before and it's pretty interesting to know that uh, for the Escanaba Mill pumps more than 400 million dollars in uh, wages, salaries, and taxes into our community. And, uh, uh, plus, in addition to, they, they put out about $50,000 in a wide variety of community organizations focused on education, sustainability, local health, and human services. So, just thought the commission would like to see that. I thought that was pretty interesting. Safety officer Terry Larson stopped in and turned in his uh, announcement to retire 
last week, last uh, effective work day will be the 31st of this month. Terry's 53 years old and he has 28 years of service to the city. Thank you for your service, Terry. Um, the question came up on live charter. We just got some things back. Originally, we were looking at uh, the last time we asked it was going to be 14, 14,000 a year. So we got a price back. Um, installation, a one time installation cost of $250. Then our, our fiber rental per month would be $360 a month, in addition to paying the technician, um, we pay uh, $333 a month for the technician. So it boils down to it's around $700 a month, $693. So it'd be uh, $8,320 for next year if we elect to have live meetings on TV. $8,320. How much is it now? Right now we are paying $1,000 a quarter for Adam being here. So we're paying $4,000 right now. So, so it's a difference of? It would be a double. 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 Yeah. $4,320 a month. thing I had was I will be uh, going on vacation, leaving on Friday afternoon, and I'll be back a week from next Monday for the commission meeting on the 10th of April. That's all I have. All right. City Commission and Committee Report, or Board and Commission Report. Okay, public comment. In Levine, 27.2 Southfield Road, Gladstone. Uh, to the commissioners, last year, everybody was saying how good of a job you were doing. All of a sudden, you can't get three people to vote in anything. Why can't you put things on the agenda discuss it and bring it up for a vote at the next meeting where people can where you just have a chance to think over what you're voting on. People are very upset in this town. I'm very upset. I have a good reason to be. I met with, with Eric on the 20th and I did not appreciate what he told me. He told me O'Connell Steve you and me and other people that are working on this petitions, troublemakers. That, I didn't appreciate that a bit. Uh, if I, we would call police if I were at the compost site and harass some people. The only people I harass is the people that come in here that don't belong in there, don't pay. 35 people paid last year. Is that a good thing for Gladstone? We're, we ain't got no money yet. We're leaving people use our money for nothing. Got a uh, uh, harbor down here. More people use that compost site than the harbor, I'll tell you that. We're spending all that money down there, but we don't have enough money to keep the compost going. Since 2014, I spent all my time trying to do the right thing for Gladstone. And I don't appreciate people uh, running me down or saying bad things about me or any other. If you can't get nothing done through here, we go to the citizens. And that's what's happening in this town. I hate to say it, but that those two petitions, that ain't the only two that's going to be going. So people better start doing the right thing in this town. You're doing a good job. I like what you make, what your remarks were tonight. Steve, the same thing. Here you had two people vote, and you got two people voting against. There you can't get nothing done. I'm not, I'm not, I'll talk to you later, Bosley. Anyway, uh, something's got to be done in this town pretty soon because if you don't, of course, you know the state will take over us. It's not good. And people in Gladstone do not like what's happening to us. 
I don't mind working. I volunteer for anything I can help out with, and I've been doing that. I help out with the Elks. I help out with the VA. Compost. I put hundreds of hours in there, and then they turn around and crap on me and tell me I'm a troublemaker. I don't appreciate that a bit. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Anyone else? I will. My name's Louise Scholler. I live at 534 25th Street. I consider the city meetings to be very illuminating. Um, I haven't attended up until this year, but since I have a Boy Scout that's doing community uh, service badge in the world, and the National Service badge, it's been very interesting to see how things are run. Um, I, I can say that I don't agree with everything that you guys pass around here. I think a lot of it is frivolous. It's not necessary. If it was up to me and my budget, if my furnace breaks, I have to fix it. If my roof leaks, I have to fix it. If I want to paint my house a different color or I want a landscape, that's optional, okay? So I consider you guys' a job to take care of the business that needs to be addressed and leave all the optional stuff for optional. If we have extra money to put a nice intersection downtown, that's cool. But um, if we have the money to build, a, uh, to build a fruit market and then sell it for a, a, a loss and then talk about building another one someplace else, to me that's ir irresponsible, sorry. Um, but um, I would appreciate it you know, if you guys keep us informed of what's going on. If I have a water leak in my, in my street, it's nice to know that it's gonna be repaired before the road caves in. Um, or at least if there is water leaks, it's nice to know that you guys um, let us know about it so we can keep our water running. Because two years ago, um, I was one of the fatalities who had to be hooked up to unfriendly neighbors for a week while uh, my water was getting fixed and my neighbors nearly had their house burned down. So trying to get my water going again, so we, we all had fun. But um, it, it's really nice to see that some people are standing up for the little people and um, I like it when you guys don't frivolously spend my money because it's my tax money too that you guys are spending. And um, it's, it's about 20% um, of my monthly income is going for taxes. So it's a significant amount, even though I have a little house, but it's a significant amount of my income. And so uh, I appreciate it when you guys spend our money wisely. Thanks. Thank you. Norlander, 1017 Superior. I had to, someone had to speak a little more positively. I think you're doing a fine job um, for using the extra one point whatever mills um, to keep the city's services as they are. The city employees are all, I've watched your budget meetings on TV. The input was good. They know what they're doing. They're not trying to give us Cadillacs. Um, so just a positive no, I think you're doing a fine job. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, moving on to city commissioner comments. Commissioner View. Uh, the only comment I have is uh, congratulations to the UP North Central Jets. They're still part of our whole community in the UP. I think it's amazing and what they have accomplished and we should all be proud of them. I am. Sir. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Mantle. Um, yeah, I'd just like to thank everybody for coming tonight, and I would encourage everybody to come again on Friday. Um, we have been putting in multiple hours of work, as the one citizen mentioned. All those budget meetings were available on, to be watched. Um, there were, I estimate, just probably about a good, 30 to 45 hours just on budget, um, talking to all departments. And as a citizen of this city too, I'm fully vested here. I, I got kids going to school. I have, I'm, you know, I, I, I don't want to leave. That's why I'm sitting up here because I'm very concerned about the, this, this city and where it's going and what it's faced. And we do, we are on the right path. We are doing the right things and we are not, we don't want to, leave the future generation with even bigger burdens to overcome. So I, I can say from this side of the, 
of things that we are working towards that of maintaining things of maintaining our community and getting things on the right path so in the future it's not such a struggle and that we can continue to excel and be one of the I believe best communities in not only in the state but anywhere in the Midwest so. Thank you. yeah I'd like to <coughs> just to add to what Brad said you know we are we are trying to do the best we can here and you know, the wheel of government do move slow sometimes and <coughs> we do have a lot of issues to, to deal with ahead of us right now and um, you know, we're doing the best we can I know sometimes it doesn't appear as though we we are but we're putting in a lot of hours, and, and Eric has, and you know, I'd like to thank Eric for putting in the time and putting up with us for you know, all the stuff we put him through, too. You know, it's not an easy job being where he's at right now. And by all means, we're all reachable. Our, our emails are on the website. If you've got any questions or concerns, give us a call, email us. You know, we're here to listen. We're here for you. you know, we're, we're trying to look out for the people of this town. That's, that's why we're here. That's all we have. I too want to commend Eric and the staff for putting out the budget there and it's not an easy decision that we have to make. <coughs> We've spent a lot of time on it, they've spent a lot of time on it, so just thank you for putting the time in on it. So now on the city clerk comments. Um, last week I attended the clerk's conference um, in Mount Pleasant. Um, received some great information, some great update and continuing education credits um, that I can't wait to put to use um, here at the city of Gladstone. Um, and um, we'll be sharing some of that um, as I have time. I am still on personal leave today and tomorrow and I'll be back in action here at the city on Wednesday. Um, I wanna thank my coworkers and Eric um, for getting the packet out to you guys and the public. Um, while I was gone and keeping my office afloat with various activities as when I'm out there's nobody in my office. So um, thank you. You guys allowed me to go and made it all work like I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. All right. Next agenda item is a closed session negotiation and strategy of union contract. Someone want to make a motion? I move that we enter in a closed session to consider strategy and negotiation session connected with the negotiation of the collective bargaining <coughs> agreement as allowable under the Open Meetings Act 267 of 1976, Section 8, Item C. All right, someone want to support. support? Okay, so we have a motion and a support. So now we need the Commis roll call. Commissioner Phelan? Yes. Commissioner Thompson is absent and excused. Commissioner View? Yes. Um, Commissioner Manila? Yes. Mayor Boswick? Yes. All right, we are now in closed session.